Hello guys and welcome back. This is Dom and this is a classic vintage 909 drum machine. The real deal. On this video, we're going to sample this drum machine and then use these samples inside our brand new instrument, Backbone, to create completely brand new sounds, manipulate the kick drums, the snares, tune them to our song, retaining the punch, creating massive hybrid sounds using the great amount of power of Backbone's Decompose and Resynth engine. So, without any further ado, Let's sample. Okay, we're about to sample the TR909. And let me explain the setup a little bit. Single cable, we go to a DI, this guy's noisy, and we're going straight to the AXR4U, straight to the input. The 909 is very simple to sample because basically we can trigger all the sounds using the buttons right here. So this is going to be super, super easy. And of course, the 909, it sounds brilliant. Again, the great thing with Backbone is that we can even sample one instance of the kick drum and then change it as we want. But I'm going to record quite a few things because we have these lovely drum machines here. So I'm going to go and record many different kick drums with different tuning and all these things. Let's start with the kick drum. snare drums see how noisy that is toms the famous clap so this is how i sample the 909 we're going to be very meticulous with the sampling and then we're going to take all these samples drop them into backbone and create some amazing sounds. So we brought our 909 samples into Cubase and now we're ready to start creating some unique samples with Backbone. Now the first sample I'm going to tackle is the 909 kick drum. Personally, I love 909 kick drums and the fact that I can mangle them and transform them into Backbone is a really big deal. So let's get this first sample. We have this sample right here. So this is our sample and I'm going to drop it into Backbone. And there we go. The first thing I want to do is I want to decompose this sample. Of course, I can play it straight away on the keyboard. And let's start decomposing. I'm going to activate pre-listen. And what this allows me to do is it allows me to separate the tonal element that I might want to use for creating a bass, for example, to the noise element that gives me the snap and the attack. So let's do this. Let's listen. So this is my tonal element and this is my noise element. This sounds good to me, so let's apply. And now I'm going to do a little bit of housekeeping. I'm going to reduce the length of the samples because this is just noise from the drum machine. And uh, I'm going to do the same for, for the noise element. And now let's see what we can do. This is a very short kick drum, mind you, right? So. I'm thinking, can we create a bass out of this? Let's find out. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my tonal element, solo it so I can isolate it and perform a pitch analysis. And as you can see, because it's such a short sample, this is basically transient still. And now we have this tonal element and now I can assign it to my root key and move this root key to the C3 range so I can play it very easily around the center of my keyboard. So now I have a tuned kick drum. Now, if I go to my resynthesizer page, I can have even more options. Let's go and change the position. Even like that, I can get so many different variations that it's incredible. I like it around here. It has a nice thump. Now let's say I want to create a sub bass out of this 909 kick drum. Let's see how we can do this. It's very, very simple. First, I want to go to my amp page and turn this sample into sustain mode. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go to my recent page and activate 
the hold last spectrum function. Now what this does is it basically allows Backbone to hold the last spectrum of the sample. In this case, I can set this here. So let's listen to this. So this is transient still. I want to pick something around this area. Somewhere around here. Sounds nice. Let's go here. And now what I can do is because it's a little bit lower in volume, because this is still the decay of the sample, I can use the auto gain control to compensate for that loss of volume. And let's try it. Let's see if we have a sub bass. Yes, that was it. So literally in a few seconds, you can create a sub bass, an original sub bass sound out of a 909 kick drum. If you want, you can start tweaking this a little bit. Let's try the purity. Format. Maybe I want to add a little bit more purity. This will clean up my low end a little bit. And I can change the speed as well. And now if I go to my pitch page, I can start experimenting with the pitch parameters. So for example, the first thing that I can do is I can activate my glide and maybe I want to turn this into a legato bass. Right, this is really cool. Now let's go and turn on the wave so we can see what we're doing and I'm going to activate the pitch envelope. See how much attack I can get out of this? The attack that we can get out of this is incredible and I haven't even activated the noise element yet. Let's do this. Just for a quick comparison, that was the original sample. And now we have something like this. I mean, the amount of attack is insane. And of course I can tune this as much as I want. Or I can turn my envelope into bipolar mode and create some really cool effects like this. And we can make the decay a little bit faster or slower. Let's add some effects, let's add some distortion. I'm going to go to my effects tab and I'm going to add a little bit of distortion here. Let's add a little bit of distortion. This distortion works very, very well with kick drums. So I'm going to add quite a bit of hard clip. And I can mix it in so I can keep my subs nice and clean. <laughs> now let's go and see what we can do with the noise very quickly. I mean, I'm very happy with this as it is, but let's see what we can experiment with with the noise. So I activate the resynth and let's go and change the speed. Now let's say I don't want this to go into my distortion. I can go into my amp page and maybe I want to direct it straight to the output. So this bypasses all the effects that we have here. And now. So the possibilities are completely endless. You can tweak and tweak the sound. You can get like hundreds of different sounds just from one 909 kick. Now, if you're happy with your sample, just grab this icon, click and drag into your DAW. And we have this sample right here. So let's try another example now. I'm going to bring another instance of Backbone. And this time I'm going to tweak a 909 tom. So let's bring this tom here. We have this one. Very typical 909 tom. Let's drag it in and let's see how it sounds. Perfect. Now let's decompose this so we can process the tonal to the noise element 
in a different way. Let's try and pre-listen. Let's listen to the noise. And I can hear a little bit of top end right there. I'm going to use my cutoff to clean it off a little bit. Perfect, and I'm going to hit apply. And now we have our two elements layered. So let's see what we can do. First of all, we can play that tom now. Now, what I want to do is I want to make sure that I have a clean sample. I think there's a bit of silence at the very beginning, so let's clean it up. Let's do some housekeeping very quickly. It's very easy to do this in Backbone. Of course, you can do it in your DAW beforehand, but no problem, all these things Backbone can handle them really, really well. So, now I'm going to do a pitch analysis. There we go. Assign it to my root key and move to our C3 range. And now what if I want to create a synth sound out of this? Let's go to our resynth page and activate resynth. Let's see what I can do. I'm going to isolate the tonal element. And I'm going to make, let's see what we can do with the purity. So basically I'm reducing the purity, which gives this kind of, gives me a more aggressive sound in this case. I'm tweaking the format as well. And maybe I can change the speed. Now this is of course a part of the story where Backbone is becoming a synth, right? So you can tell, you can come up with so many different sounds. If I change the acceleration as well, I can get the playback to go faster and I get a shorter sound. like this. Now for my noise element I'm going to activate the resynthesizer as well and for this one I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to activate my filter and for this one I'm going to change the format a little bit to add a little bit of snap and why don't we go and add some cool effects. I'm going to process those sounds separately so I'm going to go to my effects so I'm going to turn them into parallel mode so that means they're not in series so I can have them running in parallel so I can go to my overview page and I can say I want to send my tonal element to FX bus 2 and my noise element to FX bus 1 and now let's see what I can do maybe I want to add a little bit of distortion to my tonal element Let's see. Distortion. And maybe for my noise element, I want to add a little bit of reverb. <laughs> nice. So let's go ahead and uh, turn the mix down a little bit. And maybe turn down the room size. And just to make things a little bit greedier, why don't we go to the filter section for my tonal element and maybe I can go ahead and add a nice filter here. With a little bit of distortion. So let's add a tube drive distortion and let's pull down our cutoff to 600 Hertz. You can see that this updates straight away. I like the way that this opens up, so maybe I can assign this to the velocity. And all of a sudden I have a dynamic, aggressive synth sound. So if I play softly... And you know what I'm gonna do? I'm also going to make my noise layer velocity sensitive, so that I can go from a very, very dark tone to a very aggressive synth. Let's go like this and let's see what happens. I'm gonna play softly first. You know what? I might add a little bit of reverb to the tonal element as well. Let's go like this. Just a tiny bit of reverb so that it blends.
and of course, if I want to export my sample into Cubase, of course, I can just go here, drag, drop, good to go. So with Backbone, we just created a super dynamic synth sound out of a 909 Tom. And this all came from this sample. That's Backbone. So there you go, guys. Here's how Backbone can help you use a classic drum machine like the 909 to create completely unique drum sounds and, of course, manipulate and mangle the samples you throw at it however you want to using the decompose and resynthesizer features. You can imagine how many sounds you could come up with if you use samples from your existing library, the samples included in the Backbone library, or, of course, if you sample your own drum machines. I hope you like this video, guys. Subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any of our upcoming future videos. If you like this one, we have more coming soon. Have lots of fun and see you in the next one.